So in this video, I will focus even further on benzodiazepine use disorder. As I touched on earlier, while physical dependence comprised of tolerance and withdrawal is expected with regular prescription use, in and of itself, having physical dependence to benzodiazepines does not qualify as having a use disorder or an addiction. You can summarize the definition of addiction or a use disorder as continued compulsive use despite consequences. If you want to break this down into the different categories of the criteria for a use disorder, while there are the physical dependence criteria of tolerance and withdrawal, it must also impact one or more of the other criteria, which can be categorized as the three C's. So cravings, which is the strong urge or desire to use, loss of control of use, consequences from substance use include social consequences, so impacting relationships, occupational, impacting work, recreational, as well as having negative impacts on one's psychological or physical health. When prescribing patients benzodiazepines, some things that may be a possible sign of a developing use disorder would be repeated unsanctioned dose escalations. So I'd say if this happens once and you discuss with a patient your concerns about their changing their dose without a discussion, that does not mean it's a use disorder. However, if there is a pattern of frequent dose escalations that someone perceives they need more and more of the medication to function normally, especially beyond amounts that you feel comfortable prescribing. That could be a sign of a developing use disorder. If a patient gets to the point that they really feel they cannot cope at all without the medication, but really in a sense of, and I need more of it, or I run out early, or there's this other loss of control, because certainly that we have patients that have been given these medications because they are in a state where they cannot currently function without some additional pharmacotherapy and psychotherapy support. Additionally, if patients describe having a strong desire or urge to use these medications, and again, especially if this urge drives them to do so in a way that is not as prescribed, they're running out early, they're getting prescriptions from multiple prescribers, those would all be concerning that someone is moving into the misuse and potential use disorder criteria. However, when we look at the prevalence of benzodiazepine use in the U.S., I think it's really important to convey that the vast majority of our patients are taking these medications as prescribed. So over 80% of patients take benzodiazepines as prescribed. And it's only 1.5% of benzodiazepine users that have a possible use disorder or addiction. So it's actually a very small percentage of patients prescribed these medicines that develop a use disorder. So I think we have over-attributed the risk of addiction to these medications and under-acknowledged the prevalence of physical dependence and chronic use and subsequent risk of protracted withdrawal in many of our patients. When we are thinking about how to decrease the risk of misuse or addiction to these medications. You can do so by screening for addiction-prone substances. You can do this in your history taking when asking about an individual's personal and family history of substance use disorders. We also know that a uh, personal history of trauma increases the risk for substance misuse and addiction. You can utilize the screening portion of screening brief intervention and referral to treatment to help identify and address current addiction-prone substance use. I encourage everyone to routinely review the prescription drug monitor database available to them before they prescribe these medications and on refills. This is important both to understand pattern of prescriptions, whether they have gotten prescriptions from other providers, if they're on more than one medication in this class, what other controlled substance they are on, if they are also prescribed an opioid or intermittently prescribed an opioid that you have 
advise them of the risk of overdose and prescribe them naloxone. So I think this is a really, really important step to implement in prescribing these medications. It is also recommended that, as is possible within your site of practice, to obtain routine drug testing before starting and then intermittently with these patients that are prescribed benzodiazepines. I realize depending on your site of practice, this may or may not be possible. And I think if it can be implemented as a routine thing that is done for anyone prescribed these, it actually just adds to us having more information about the potential risks our patients are exposed to with other prescription medications and substances that they may be using. I always tell patients the point is not to catch them, but the point is to make sure we have as much information as possible about what is in their system so that we know how to advise them about the risks that we also are aware if the current severity of their use disorder, if that's what we're finding evidence as, is provided an adequate level of treatment and management I do think it's extremely important that everyone realize that the usual or most commonly prescribed benzodiazepines, so alprazolam, lorazepam, clonazepam, are not commonly tested for on the outpatient urine drug screen. So if you have an unexpected result on the urine drug screen, it may just be that it's not picking those up because that's not what the screen is intended to pick up. So I would not change your clinical practice based on the results of a urine drug screen If what you are seeing and what the patient's saying do not match up, I would make sure that you have a way to get confirmatory testing. So to summarize the key points for this video, many adults in the U.S. are prescribed a benzodiazepine, and the majority of these individuals take their benzodiazepine prescribed. So over 80% take their benzodiazepine as prescribed. A very small fraction of benzodiazepine users misuse their benzodiazepine. So of those prescribed a benzodiazepine, 1.5% develop a use disorder, which is 0.2% of the U.S. population. We can take steps to decrease the risk of misuse and addiction when prescribing a benzodiazepine, including screening for high-risk substance use, checking the prescription drug monitoring, and utilizing routine drug testing.